Good evening, this is Melissa with the Stock Swish. And I am talking tonight about a failed bearish gap down at which was INTC. I didn't play this today, I saw it this morning. I thought it was going to work, but there were better things to look at and rate, so I never even took the time to rate it. I'm not sure how it would have rated in my 26 point rating system. It doesn't really matter because there was better stuff to do today, so I didn't take the time to rate it. However, I thought it was going to work when I just looked at it this morning, and you know what? It didn't work. I just want to go over this today. The thing is, there will always be a market to trade because six different people, five different people, ten different people can look at a chart and see ten different things. And that's trading. You know, that that's trading. It's not one person's right or one person's wrong. I read things a certain way. I read professional bearish gaps a certain way. I have a specific, specific rating system and way that I play things. I want to see a momentum move, and it has to meet my criteria, and I play it when it does. If you have a strategy to play something that looks like this, go for it. If you don't, stay away. This did not meet my criteria for a bearish gap, and in fact, it failed in the day. That being said, I know people that shorted it. I would never have done that in a thousand years. Why? Let's just take a look at it. And again, this is why there'll always be a market, because people shorted this today, and I wouldn't have done it. People do different stuff all the time. Remember, you got to know what you're doing. If you have a thing that to do this, and it works for you over and over and over and over and over again, do it. I don't. I have something that works for me that is consistently working for me as close to 100% as is possible in the market. And so therefore, I have to follow my criteria, my rating system, my points. This didn't work. This thing opened 14 cents under this pivot area here. This should have gone like immediately. Red, down, boom. It didn't. So when it opened and dinged one little penny, boop, and flipped right around and went green, and went all the way up to 22, that this isn't showing weakness. It's just showing buying. Of course, the market didn't help us today. Let's quickly look at the market. The market was just rallying up all morning. Uh, so that really didn't help INTC either. Let's just quick take a look at it here. Here's the 15-minute. One, two, three. Three nice big back green bars in the 15-minute chart of the market. I remember seeing the market this morning and the short I was in. Luckily, it didn't affect my short, but this helped longs today. The market helped longs today. See that? All right, let's get back to this. So that was the daily chart. I never short into something that's three green bars in a 15-minute chart like this. Never. It's 10.15 by the time this bar opens. That is way too late for me to be looking for something to come in. Something that only got down 14 stinking cents? Come on. That thing should have gone. Boom. If it was weak, it would have gone. It went up and retested 22. I know it held 22. I know it dinged the 8 on the daily. I know what it did, but it should not have done that. And it, this is not weakness. Remember, pretend this is real time. I'm not shorting into that. That's crazy. I'm not doing that. You want to scalp it for 10 cents or 15 cents or 20 cents? Be my guess. There's no way on the face of the planet. My friend called me today. It's not going under the low of the day. You want to play this thing? Take your chances. Roll the dice. You're going to get it. 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents. And look at what it did. 21.59. 21.59. If anything today, this was a buy. I'm not buying it because it's a professional bearish gap down. And I'm not flipping around what I do at, and when I know it's really a professional bearish gap down. And by the way, this thing is red tomorrow. I, I'm just really probably almost 100% positive this is going to be red tomorrow. It's still a bearish gap down. It didn't work today. And the market rallied this morning and buying came in and it just held itself. Sometimes there's no explanation for these things. I'd be surprised if this wasn't red tomorrow because it actually did hold 22. I would not have shorted it though today for the reasons that we discussed. Let's look at the five. I want to play something that has real certainty. Certainty that makes sense to me. I want to look at the chart and I can make sense of everything it's doing. And that's what I love about gaps. That's what I love about my own strategy and the course that I teach, the 26 points. It makes sense. I can understand it. If you took my class, you could understand it. It makes sense. It's detailed. But it makes sense. And the detail is so detailed that it makes sense. And this is why I love gaps. I love gaps because gaps make sense. There's many, many things.
things that trade all day long, different days in the market, 365 days a year that make no sense. Most things make no sense. Gaps make sense. Here it is. This is the five minute. This is the first five minutes of the day. This basically is a reverse swoosh. We'll look at the one minute then. Buying, buying, buying. Rest, rest, big buying, buying, buying. Okay, there's a difference between buying and short covering. This isn't an uptrend now. It's 10, 15, this is buying. This bar here is not short covering. Why? The gap didn't gap down some crazy huge amount. It gapped down 14 cents from the pivot. Uh-uh. This should have gone red immediately. Our dinky rally. This is buying. It's too big of a green bar for the way that it gapped. Okay, this is I'm, this is a detailed chart analysis here. you got to understand the way to read charts, but I'm telling you, this is not what I want to see. And then this is definitely not short covering here, although some people probably tried to short it here, and then they dinked out of it too, plus buying came in. Do you see that? Somebody shorted this in here. And then, boop, went over that. Let's go look at it one minute. It's in an uptrend up until 10.15. I, I don't want to short into that. Every time over the high of the day, over the high of the day, over the high of the day. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Five times something's going over the high of the day, that's higher highs, and it's going up. And it's going up. It's it's like at an angle. It's going up. This is up, 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 up. I'm not shorting into that. See? There's more green than red in this, clearly. And like I said, this dinged around one penny and poop did this. Now, you could have gotten it here. I wouldn't have done it because of this green bar. And it should have gone immediately because of where the gap was. So, fine. This is the only, this was the only valid entry in the face of the planet to take short in this today. I would not have done it for the reasons I explained. And I didn't like it as much as other stuff. If you wanted to do it, you could talk me into that. Held the high of the day. Take it. You're out here and you're not getting back in it. You got stopped out here. If you check it, and there's you don't take it again then. You don't take it again here. Okay? And then it immediately reversed right here. And you definitely don't take it again here. You didn't have three red bars in a row anywhere in here. You didn't have three red bars in a row anywhere in here. Ten thirty four was the first time you had three red bars in a row. You didn't have three red bars in a row. You had three red bars in a row twice into twelve o'clock. Where where are you making your money if you're shorting this thing? Twelve fifteen then is where it halted in there. So, I mean, I hope you understand this. It's just, this is not what I teach. But I just want to point out, I know people that shorted this today. And they did make money. They made, you know, 20 cents, whatever they made on it. But it didn't have high odds of working as a big play. And I, I like things to work. I want to get in something that has a good entry. I want to get in something that has high odds of working. And I want to get in something that's going to move, move on the day. I want momentum. I want to move. And if that thing better prove itself to me in the morning, and if it doesn't set up by the morning, I need to darn good reason and this gave me no reason today if anything the market was pulling up the market was bullish for a good period of the morning i would have been concerned that wasn't going to work at all which it didn't but i just want to point out how, how funny it is that you know different people can look at different things and and everybody will make money doing something different if they want to it's about consistency though if you're going to do something like this you better know why you're doing it and consistently are you going to make money doing this i don't know you know only you know i don't i don't this is zero conviction for me to short this. I need conviction, 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 conviction. I am not shorting this. This gives me zero conviction that this is going to work on the day properly. I don't even have to think. And you know what? My instinct was right on this not to even read it this morning. It's funny how that works. That when you play one strategy over and over and over and over and over again, you just get a good instinct for stuff and you just kind of know. You just know when stuff's going to work or not. I still go through my points. I go through the system, but... You know, you just know sometimes, and that's why it really pays to learn one thing extremely well, because you get a sixth sense for it, and nobody can teach you that. You take my class, you learn my class, you start doing it, you're going to get a sixth sense for it too. It's possible. Anyways, this is Melissa with the stockswish.com. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me, 
at melissa at the stockswish.com. Thanks and have a great day.